Hello and welcome to Excel Pivot Tables for Beginners. My name is Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. If you're new to Pivot Tables, I hope this video provides a solid introduction. We're going to talk about tables, pivot tables, and then some formatting techniques. Now, before I flip to Excel, we need to talk about the difference between tables and pivot tables. A table is a way to store the underlying detail or the data transactions. It's not really designed to compute like subtotals or aggregate values. A pivot table, on the other hand, is a summary report. So let's just jump right in with tables. Okay, here I have some transactions. This represents some detail that I exported from some system or perhaps I just typed it in. The first thing we want to do is store it in a table. The way that we do that is by selecting any cell within the range and going to insert table, not pivot table, table. In the resulting create table dialog, we confirm the range looks good, which ours does. And then we confirm that our table has a header row. That just means that the first row contains column labels. We click OK. Excel does its thing, applies some formatting, and now we know that our transactions are stored in a table. Now, while this isn't a strictly required step, it definitely is a recommended step. Okay, next let's jump into pivot tables. Once we have our underlying data stored in a table, now it's time to create a pivot table, in other words, a summary report. The way that we do that is by clicking any cell within the table and then going to insert pivot table. In the resulting pivot table dialog, we basically confirm two things. A, where is our underlying data? And B, where do we want the report? So our data is stored in a table. Now by default, tables are named table one, two, three, and so on. And you can change those table names. But for now, we confirm that our data is stored in the table called table one. Next, we need to tell Excel where we want the pivot table report. We can choose in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. And we want to put our pivot table in an existing worksheet. So we browse to that sheet and then we need to select a cell. We have to select a cell that represents the upper left corner of the pivot table report. If we just click OK without selecting a cell, we're going to get an error. And so what we want to be sure to do is select the sheet and then select any cell that represents the upper left corner of the pivot table report. Then we click OK. Now we see a couple of changes in our workbook. First of all, we see a new image. This is just a temporary placeholder. Next, we're going to notice that we have a new panel on the right. It's called pivot table fields. And what we want to notice is that there are really two primary sections to this panel. The first is a list of the fields. The second is a list of layout areas. So let's talk about each of those. First of all, the fields. What is a pivot table field? A pivot table field simply represents a data column. So for example, our pivot table fields are check num, account, and amount. And if we browse back to our data table, we see that we have check num, account, and amount. So each column in our source data represents a pivot table field. Now the way that we build our report is simply by defining the report structure. In other words, where do we want check numbers to appear? Where do we want the account name to appear? Where do we want the amount to appear? And the way that we define these is by inserting the pivot table fields into one of four layout areas. And the layout areas are rows, columns, values, and filters. And in this introductory video, we're going to talk about the rows and values layout areas. So let's head back to our source data. If I want to see the transactions summarized by account, then we want to place the account into the rows layout area. So let's cruise back over here and let's insert account into the rows layout area. Now, just as with anything in Excel, there's several ways to do that. One way is to click and drag. I can simply click and drag and release. And now what we can see is our pivot table preview has updated. So now what I see is one row for every unique account in that column. In other words, there are 12 accounts, okay? When I look at this detail, there are many more transactions. So Excel is aggregating these transactions and it's providing one row for every unique value that it finds in this account column. Now, the next thing we want to do is to insert the amount column into the values layout area. The values layout area typically stores those numeric columns. For example, things you want to add. In our case, we want to add the amounts. So we simply insert the amount field into the values layout area. How do we do that? Once again, we can simply click and drag and release. Okay, let me go ahead and just expand these column widths a little bit. There we go. 
So now at this point, this is awesome. What we have is one row for every account and the sum of the amount column. So how do we know if this is correct? Well, let's take a look at the grand total. The grand total here is 23,280. Let's go back to the detail. And there's a couple of different ways to, to get the total. A pretty easy way is to simply head to the table ribbon tab and check the total row checkbox. And now we get the new total row, which also is 23,280. So by checking this, we can determine that all of these transactions made it into the pivot table report. Now let's talk about formatting. Okay, the first thing to note is that we're gonna format the numbers a little different from how we format them in other places. Typically, when we wanna format some cells, we select the range of cells and then apply the formatting. Now the problem with that is that the dimensions of the pivot table can change and they change depending on what fields we put in here or if we refresh the data. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. But for now, the thing to keep in mind is that rather than selecting the cells and then applying the formatting, what we do instead is we right click any value cell and then select number format. So we're not using format cells, we're using number format. Then we pick whatever kind of number format we want. In this case, I'm gonna go with no decimals and a thousand separator, I click okay. And now that formatting is applied to all of the value fields in this pivot table. Now, the other thing in terms of formatting is that there are many formatting options, too many to cover in this short video, but I do wanna let you know that you can head over to the pivot table design and look at pivot table styles. And there are many default or built-in styles that you can pick from, so feel free to check those out. Now, the last thing I wanna cover is what happens next month, right? Let's say that we built this summary report and let's say we need to do this every month. Do we have to rebuild the pivot table every month or how does that work? Well, we don't really. Once this pivot table is built, we can simply add data to the data source and then refresh the pivot table. So how does that work? Check it out. So to the data tab, head back to our data table and let's add a new value. So let's cruise over here and let's say we have a check number. It's 4,200 and let's say it is for wages and let's say it's $1,000. Okay, so our new table total is 24,280. Let's come back to the summary and we notice it's still 23,280. So what's the deal? Is Excel like broken or what? No, here's the thing. When we create formulas, those immediately and automatically refresh their values when any dependent cell value changes. That's not the case with a pivot table. With a pivot table, we need to manually refresh it. So how do we do that? One way is to simply right click the pivot table and select refresh. And now we see that the new value has flowed in, the new transaction appeared, and the new totals agree. Now the cool thing about a pivot table is even if we add a new account, it's automatically going to adapt its dimensions to include that new account. So let's check it out. All right, so let's add a new check, check number 4201, and let's call this other and let's do it for 2000. All right, so the new updated total is 26,280. Let's go back to our pivot table report. We notice there's no change, which is fine because we know we need to refresh. So let's right click and refresh this pivot table. And now we can see that when a new account is added, the dimensions of the pivot table automatically expand to include this new account. In other words, we've defined the structure of this report and we defined that structure when we inserted the fields into the layout areas. So it's going to display and summarize whatever transactions happen to appear in this table. And this is why pivot tables are so cool, because new values, new accounts, new items automatically flow into the pivot table when we click refresh. Now there's lots of other things to explore, for example, sorting and filtering and tons of other things. I wanted to keep this video short because it's really a tutorial for an introduction to pivot tables but there's lots of other stuff to check out so you can update the sort order, you can apply filters, you can head over to the pivot table analyze tab, and there's tons of other commands, lots of other design options and layout options, so you definitely wanna check it out. Now, in addition to providing Excel tips on my YouTube channel, I also offer formal structured courses, which include on-demand videos as well as live office hours with me on Zoom. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I'd love to have you. Feel free to check out the link in the description below. But I hope that this short video was a solid introduction to pivot tables, how they work, and that they really reflect a summary report that summarizes the detailed transactions. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully this helps. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 